Hello, and welcome to this demonstration on offline domain join for remote workstation for on-demand migrator for Active Directory from Quest. In today's business world, more and more companies are switching to a WFA or work from anywhere model. And when it comes to migrating user workstations with on-demand migrator, Quest can help you move those workstations whether the users are in the office or remote. ODJ, or offline domain join, is a three-step process with little interruption to the end user. ODJ does require a one-way trust. Computer objects must exist prior to cutover. And because the workstations require connectivity to the target network via VPN or other connection methods, is part of a larger communication plan. Once you've read your computer objects into the database using ODM Directory Sync, it's time to switch over to ODM Active Directory to start building your migration profiles. You do this by going to the Pancake menu and selecting Device and Servers. Now that we're on the Active Directory side, we go back to the Pancake menu and select Profiles. And here we will build a migration profile, a network profile, a device reactable profile, as well as set up the credentials and cache credentials for the offline domain join process. Under Migration Profile, there is already our default created. So let's select this and click Edit. Here you'll give the profile a name, configure the domain delay join, as well as the reboot delay. This will be the dialog box that pops up to let users know that their machines are going to be rebooted. After you click Next, you have the option to make this a hybrid join device as well. In addition, you have the options to empty the recycling bin, and you also have the option to join an existing computer account if one exists. We click Save, and we can move on to the network profile. Under Network Profile, there is also a default, so we select this and click Edit. Give your profile a name. You have the options to set the DNS server for this computer, edit the DNS suffix for the network adapter, you can append DNS suffixes to the network adapter, register the network adapter's address in DNS, or enter Win server information. Typically with workstations, there's nothing to be done here, but with servers, you may want to modify this profile. Next, we move on to device reactal. And again, there is already a default, so we can select that and click Edit. Give your profile a name. And from here, you have the ability to change the logging level, as well as add additional components to be processed. If you're using roaming profiles, this is where you would check that box as well as for Windows service accounts and preserving the archive bit. Under the device reactal profile, you also have the ability to set up exclusions. We've already added a lot of the common ones in here, but it's recommended that you test these for each flavor of machine that you have in your environment. There are additional options for mount points and OneDrive folders that can be processed by the reactling engine as well. And then finally, you can control what happens if the reactling process terminates. Again, we recommend that you run the reactal process against all different flavors of machines in your environment, and you can also run the reactal process in simulation mode. Next, we'll create our credentials and our cache credentials profiles. Go to credentials. Now, there won't be a default here, so you will have to add your own. And the first thing you're going to want to do is give your profile a name, and then enter the source domain credentials, including the FQDN of the domain, the username and password, as well as the target credentials, and then click Save Profile, and then we'll move on to Cache Credentials. Select Cache Credentials. Again, you'll have to create one. There's no default here. Enter your Cache Credentials profile information, give it a name, you have to give the target domain controller IP address. And there are some options to handle ping interval, job failure, and credential prompt as well. When you run the cache credentials job, there'll be a pop-up on the user's machine. The timeout value is how long that user has to enter their credentials before the cache credentials job times out. We'll click Save Profile. Before you migrate any machine, you're going to need to deploy the workstation migration agent. And you're going to need two pieces of information to do that. And that information is found under Configurations and Downloads. Under the Device Agent section, you'll see a service URL as well as an authorization key. These will need to be part of the install for the device agent. 
In addition, we'll also need to go to the Repositories tab and configure a share for the offline domain join files. This share needs to be accessible to the source and target domain computers. Now we switched over to our workstation and we're going to deploy the ODM AD agent. This is just an MSI file that can be deployed any way you deploy packaged software. But in this instance, I'm going to install this manually. Click on our agent, click run, next. Now here's where you enter the service URL and the authorization key, which I will do so manually. Now that we have our service URL and our authorization key entered, and click next. Now that our machines have checked in and registered with ODM, we need to set the target environment. We do that by selecting the machine, going down to our action bar, selecting set target environment, click apply, and hit apply again. Next, we can move on to the Reacl step. Right now, we are logged in as our user Patricia in the bluefishresorts.com domain. If we look at the properties of one of Patricia's files, we can see that Patricia has access under her bluefishresorts.com account. When we Reacl, we will be adding the permissions for Patricia's account in the target environment, which is Sandy Shores Hotels. To do this, we will select Patricia's machine, go down to the action bar, and select Reacl. Hit Apply Actions, and Apply. Now that the Reacling process is completed, if we go to that same file on Patricia's machine and go to Properties, you can see that Patricia's bluefish.com and sandyshoreshotels.com accounts are both listed. Now that the Reacling process has been completed, it's time to run the cache credentials job. We do this by selecting the machine, going down to the action bar, selecting cache credentials, apply. We select our cache credentials profile that we created previously, and click apply. When we check back in with Patricia's machine, we can see that the cache credentials job has run. Now as Patricia, we need to enter our password and click submit. To prepare for the offline domain join process, you'll need to run the djoin command in the target network. Now that our computer account has been provisioned, we can perform the offline domain join process. Now that the cache credentials job is complete, it's time to issue the offline domain join command. Go to our machine, go to the taskbar, select offline domain join, click apply, and we have to give it the cutover credentials from the profile that we created previously. We have the option to ignore the Reacl status, or we can queue these migrations to start after a certain date. Click apply. The job has been queued, and the offline domain join command has been issued. When Patricia's machine comes back from reboot, we can now see that her machine is now part of the sandyshorehotels.com domain. And when we log in as Patricia, we can see that she has access to the same profile as she had in Bluefish Resorts. Patricia's machine has been successfully migrated from the source domain to the target domain using the offline domain join process from On Demand Migrator from Quest. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.